This project is my biggest one yet. It's an eight bedroom HMO and it nearly went completely wrong. This project nearly cost us hundreds of thousands of pounds. So stay tuned, because in this video, I'm gonna give you the full story of what happened. So this is my biggest project yet. Kind of makes me remember where I came from, where it all started. I was working in a call center, selling insurance, um, and now I'm obviously full-time property. All right, guys, so this is the outside of the property. As you can see, we put a double story rear extension. This was the existing building and we've added on all of this space. So to be honest with you, the extension we have put on has added a lot of space onto the property and it's created us two additional bedrooms. So when we bought the property, we could have made it into a six bedroom HMO with um, the space that we had. However, we decided let's go for something bigger. We put in for planning permission to do the double story extension and the eight bedroom HMO. That was all in one planning application and it was approved. We had some of the neighbors complain that does happen on most of the applications, um, but it got approved and now we've gone ahead and built it and we're just on the final stages of the project. Probably got about one month left. That's the outside. Let me show you the inside. So as we proceed into the property, on the right hand side, we have the kitchen living area and it's a really nice size guys. I'm super excited to see the end result on this one. We've partitioned this off and if you head over to this area, you've actually got one bedroom there and we've got one bedroom here. Now, these are probably one of the smallest bedrooms in the house. However, they do meet the requirements. They are well above the eight square meters, which is the local requirement for a HMO room. And we have a communal bathroom right here. So this is obviously gonna have a nice big shower, um, LED Bluetooth mirrors, and again, have another bedroom here. The cool thing about this bedroom is it does have these um, French doors so they can lead straight onto the outside area, which is gonna be nice. So yeah, two bedrooms, one bathroom. Obviously the total amount of bedrooms that we have in this property is eight. So we have eight bedrooms and we have three bathrooms. So one bathroom there and then two more upstairs. This is the communal living area, kitchen area, and as we can see right here, we're gonna have a kitchen wrapping all the way around here. Um, and we're gonna have some sort of breakfast bar area as well. Try and visualize this space with herringbone floor, big luxury sofa, really nice lighting and a luxury kitchen with a small island kitchen as well. So this is some of the downstairs. However, it doesn't end there. There's one more bedroom on this ground floor. So this is the ground floor bedroom. And again, we have the French doors. This is the garden area. And to be honest with you, I'm excited to see what we can do with this space. My idea is to get some like fairy light kind of things that go like on the top around, they stretch around the whole garden and obviously get some nice seating, maybe an outdoor heater. That's my kind of initial thoughts. However, I'm gonna see where we're at with the budget when it comes time to finish. I am gonna be sharing the full numbers on this deal later on in the video as well. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, this is the outside area. Let me show you upstairs. Okay guys, so this is bedroom number four, really nice size. And I'm excited again to see once the flooring's in, once we have a nice feature wall color up, I think it's gonna look so nice. But anyway, this is bedroom number four. This is the extension. So basically this area is all part of the extension. So this is obviously uh, bedroom number five. Right guys, so this area we have two communal bathrooms, one here and one here. Now the reason we put two back-to-back -back bathrooms is just because it's very practical when you have a large HMO to have as many bathrooms as possible. So instead of just doing one big bathroom like before, let's just do two bathrooms. So in the morning when people are getting ready, um, there'll be no conflict of, oh, I need the bathroom, but someone's in there. So there's plenty of bathrooms in here. We could have put more bathrooms. However, we didn't want to just because of the cost. Bedroom number six, um, nice size, kind of a weird shape. However, it's nice and big, so it doesn't really matter. We might get some custom wardrobes and that type of stuff. We're also gonna get wall paneling. 
So wall panelling looks really good when you're doing like a modern Victorian style property, which this will be. Um, a lot of my properties, I like to style them as modern Victorian, as I just think it's a really nice look. And I think the end result is just really good. So herringbone floor, wall panelling, these are all little things style wise that I like to implement into these HMOs. Okay, so bedroom number seven. This is pretty much simple, um, nice size room. Obviously we have the fire doors throughout. This is a big cost when you're doing HMOs because most of the time, every single HMO you do, you're gonna have to rip out all the old door frames, put new door frames in and put new fire doors in um, with the intermittent fire strips, etc. So it does become costly and it's just something that you have to get used to. So this is bedroom number eight, guys. Um, nice window, double window here. This again is part of the extension. So the extension starts here. So this is all part of the extension. And we have two very nice windows here. So yeah, I'm happy with it guys. Any questions you've got, please put it down below in the comments and stay tuned because we will be recording this project when it's fully finished so you can see how we do things and you'll be able to see the end result. So comment below all your questions, but now, Let's speak about how this project nearly went wrong and cost us hundreds of thousands of pounds. Right guys, so there's a few things that I wanted to discuss regarding this deal. Now, as we know, when I purchased this property, it was not an eight bedroom HMO. The property was just like a normal family home that I've actually added on the double story extension and now it's an eight bedroom HMO. We did one planning application, um, which was for the extension and for the fact that we we're turning it into an eight bedroom HMO. So guys, let me give you two things. I wanna tell you the full numbers and I wanna tell you what went wrong. How did this deal nearly cost us a lot? It was crazy, it could have gone so wrong and I'm just so thankful that it has worked out. Because it was a minute there where I was actually like, this is not gonna work. It was very stressful, but as we went back to at the start of the video, I said, temporary discomfort for long-term success. So that's another example of hanging in there, being resilient, being tough, and actually sticking out something and it's gonna work out. Right, let me get into the numbers. So we purchased this property for 174,000 pounds and we've actually spent 105,000 pounds on it. So we're actually all in for 280,000 pounds. However, we're looking to get this property valued between 350 to 400,000 uh, pounds. If we can get it valued at 400, then we're able to pull out, I believe, all of the money. So um, we're really hoping to get that 400K valuation. But as we know, it's not always a guarantee with these valuations. No one can guarantee you what the property is gonna be worth on the back end. So it's something, sometimes you just have to just take a leap of faith um, and obviously do all your due diligence. However, there's no guarantee you're gonna get the valuation figure that you want. Worst case, say if we ended up with a 320, 330 valuation, we still pull out the majority of the money. So we're very happy with that. Now my business partner that I purchased this property with, uh, my joint venture partner, he actually lives in a different country. So he's an overseas joint venture partner and I'm always open to doing more joint ventures. So if anyone is interested in doing a project with me, then please drop me a message. You can email me, you can DM me. I'm easy to get hold of. But yeah, let me tell you the monthly profit on this type of deal. So this deal obviously is eight bedrooms and we're looking to get roughly about 450 per room. So the total income that we're gonna be looking to achieve on this property is 3,600 pounds per month. And in a year, that's 43,200 pounds. So that's kind of the expected rent roll. What we're looking to achieve is roughly around 43,000 pounds per year. The monthly profit, I believe it's gonna be roughly around 2,400, 2,500. But with the follow-up video, when it's fully let, I will definitely tell you how this property has performed, did it achieve the numbers which we wanted it to, and basically, did it work out the way that we expected? So I'll always be 100% transparent with you guys. But let's get on to how it nearly went wrong. So basically what happened was we purchased this property in cash. And when we purchased this property in cash, the solicitors that um, actually assisted us to, to buy this house, they didn't actually let us know that the property was in two titles. Um, because the property was here and it actually had a small shop on the side. Now, we was under the understanding that it was all one title deed, but it had actually been split into two. So there was the shop and then there was the house. 
Now that actually caused us massive issues when we're getting development finance on this deal because the plan was we're going to buy in cash and then we're going to get development finance to do the refurbishment works because my business partner at that time when we bought it he only had roughly about 200k and obviously this is a big refurbishment project we needed about 105k just to do up this place so of course it didn't uh, really work because we, we had enough to buy the place and a little bit left over but we didn't have enough so we couldn't get development finance on this for various different reasons they said they don't like the property and um, the title issue basically they did it in our personal names as well so hmrc had it listed that we were buying this in our personal names and obviously we was trying to do everything through the company. So we set up the company. It needs to be through the company for like tax reasons, but the solicitor did this purchase in our personal name. So that was another problem. Um, and basically it looked like we just wasn't gonna be able to get development finance. So we had to just raise money here and there. My business partner, he came across uh, an, an extra 30, 40,000 pounds. So we was round about there. And then after literally about six, seven months, we finally got HMRC to change it to our company name. And once we had that done, we received, I think it was around 100,000 pounds for the development finance, which we've now used a portion of that. And yeah, so we have managed to get that issue sorted out. But for a minute there, I was just like, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna sell it, you know, are we just gonna just do it as a six bed and try and do it for really, really cheap. But you know what? Things worked out in the end and now we have uh, a nearly ready eight bedroom HMO. So yeah, uh, believe it or not, in about a month's time or maybe six weeks time, this will be fully, fully finished and uh, refurbished. Super excited to show you guys. But if you've enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.